So I'm going to show you how to, um, uh, I'm going to in investigate with you the use of uh, the brush, starting with a, a round brush and also a filbert today. So I'm going to start with my number eight round. Doesn't really matter what size you, you pick up. You pick up a big one or a smaller one, it doesn't matter, but maybe not a smaller one than eight. Uh, eight is probably as small as you might want to go for these exercises. You might like to, you might prefer to use your number 12, which is um, a nice, more generous after brush. Anyway, let's start with the number eight. I have got some dilute ink here, which I'm going to use. Although you can also use um, your watercolour if you prefer. We're just going to use one colour for these exercises. Um, the brush, the tip of the brush, the hairs of the brush, really, um, uh, I'll speak about them in terms of the, the, the toe, the tip, the middle or the belly and the heel brush. And what I mean by that is, is um, if we're on the tip of the brush, we are right, uh, we, we, we're ballet dancing in a way on, on the toe. And if we go down to the middle of the brush, we are um, giving it a little pressure, feeling its spring, springiness, and we're able to make a broader mark. And then if we go down to the heel of the brush, then we are really pressing more fully down and um, able to make a more broad mark. Um, so the expressiveness of the, the um, hairs of the brush um, move from tip to middle to heel. So you can get a sense of the expressiveness of that lovely springy, bouncy um, uh, group of uh, hairs, hairs of the brush. So you can play around maybe on the tip of your brush. You can play along with me here and um, perhaps making small marks just on the tip. And I'm holding the brush back from the middle part of the uh, on the handle, there's a there's a kind of um, a bulge in the wood, and that's a good place to hold it if you want to work freely with the brush. You can you know you can move pretty freely with the brush in any direction if you hold it above. If you hold your hand above the paper and um, hold the brush at that point, so it's uh, you you've got you can move your wrist around easily. In fact, that's a good exercise to do just without even trying to make a mark. Just see how flexible your wrist is holding the brush. And are you holding the brush, are you gripping it hard? Or um, are you holding it with a soft, relaxed grip? So try to cultivate a sort of relaxed grip. Um, the brush can be used uh, you can hold it very close to the hairs on the ferrule. Um, this will give you a lot of detail and control. And, um, you know, you can really work precisely. If, you, if your page is wet, you might put down just the, just the knuckle where it's dry and work uh, with the control of that. Um, but also, uh, you can work with, um, you can pull the colour along parallel to the length of your brush, or you can pull it across, across the length of the hairs. So there, there are many ways that you can make a mark. So if you want to make a, a you know, fine horizontal mark, you might choose to pull it across like that parallel to the brush. But if you want to make a more expressive mark, you might, um, want to work this way, parallel to the brush, uh, at a tangent to the brush. And another thing about that is if you just, I'm just cleaning my brush here at the moment. Um, this is something that just quickly occurred to me. I'm cleaning it and just drying it a little bit. And I'm dipping it in the uh, 
paint and if I pull that across you can see that you get one sharp edge and you get a softer edge at the back of the, at the, back of the brush. So if your paint, if you, if you only have paint part of the way up the hairs, you can almost get a kind of fade in the colour. So there's a huge number of um, possible uh, marks, um, you know, one can make repeat marks with dots, one can make very fine marks, even with a broad, even with a number 12 uh, brush, quite a big fat chunky brush, if it's a nice, if it's got a nice point, you can do really quite fine marks on it if you dance on the tip of your brush. So that's a good thing to practice, just to try to see how delicate a mark you can make from um, from your brush. And um, then you might also practice one or two arabesques. So uh, starting on the tip, coming down onto the heel, and then out again. So trying to just um, try the brush out in different ways, just experiment with it. And maybe you can think of other things that you might like to, to add to that. There might be other kind of ways you might use the brush too. So I'm just applying it sideways now to, to get a really good coverage. So um, let's just have a quick look now at the filbert. The filbert is a little bit different. The filbert is a brush which is rounded um, in shape, but also it's got a flat aspect to it as well. So it's like a flat brush, but it's rounded. And um, this actually is um, a System 3 filbert number 12. System 3 is a student grade brush and I bought this because the other ones were out of stock <laughs> over Christmas but um, the reason why it's less good than the artist quality is I think mainly because the hairs are shorter so there's less pliability, you have less play with the brush but it's interesting anyway to have one of these um, and don't despair if you bought one of these as well it's certainly, you know, it's going to be a useful brush. So um, the filbert, you find you can do quite fine marks with this as well. If you dance again on the tip, as it were, on the edge of the tip there, take its narrow aspect, you can make really quite fine marks. Let's do that with the darker, darker ink. Maybe that's easier to see on the video. It's really fine marks. So that's using the brush. I'm see how I'm holding it. I'm just putting it across and trying to to have a very light pressure. And obviously I can make those short um, or longer. So then holding, still working parallel to the the, the stem of the brush, I can make quite a, a, a broad mark with this with a rounded end. It's got this lovely rounded quality, uh, which is useful in the bird uh, feathers as well. Um, and then also you can hold it at a slight angle and get a different quality of mark again, which is narrower, but um, and then you can sort of twist it and um, try try twisting it as you bring it out so it becomes wider or conversely narrower. Uh, if you twist it as, it as you pull it out of the movement, you get it um, narrower as it comes out. So there's twisting it as it goes into the movement, from narrow to broad. And then twisting it as it comes out. Um, it makes some very interesting little 
short marks as well. And you can texture something in interesting ways with, with one of these filberts. Uh, if you think of the paintings of uh, Eric Revilius, who is an artist who likes to build up his paintings with lots of uh, well-defined sort of textural patterns made with the brush, this, this would lend itself well to some of those um, qualities of mark making. So he's working on the side, working at a tangent to the stem of the brush. So you can think of many different ways of, uh, of, of using this. And then, of course, there's um, using the full length of the hair, which may not give you a very expressive mark, but nevertheless, it's quite good to know that one can make a broad mark with, these, with this filbert as well. So it's different from which way you use it. Okay, so um, I think that might be enough playing with the brushes. Um, I'm going to I'm going to continue now with looking at the crows. I've got this photograph of crows, and I'm going to take some of the shapes and. Um, just see whether I can capture the idea of a crow in flight. So there are lots of different shapes. And um, let's start with, I'm just going to draw to start with. Move on to another one. Move on to another. Another one. Some of the shapes are quite strange because the wings are coming directly towards me. Um, but nevertheless, I'm just looking at the shapes. I'm not trying to even um, make it, you know, photogenic. I'm just looking at those, <laughs> trying to understand, trying to get a little bit of a sense of the flight of the crow in, into my head and into my hand, really. My photograph's a little bit on the small side, so I can't see the forms too clearly. Um, so it's just to give you an idea of the approach. So drawing some of these raggedy shapes. And then maybe picking up a, a, a brush and Starting with the grey, I'm trying to do a similar thing but just with a brush. And moving the brush in any direction which seems to be um, helpful.
trying not to linger too long on the shapes, just, you know, trying not to judge as you go, just, I'm trying to behave as if I were really watching these pros from my window, and there they are, um, competing for stuff on my lawn, and um, I'm trying to catch them as they in flight. And um, so catching the essential shapes and the movement and the excitement of them, this raggedy group of crows. And um, if you if you want to, you could also add a little. I'm working in grey, but I could add some um, some black whilst it's damp. But, um, just uh, uh, touching a little bit of extra paint. And so on. So, um, one could spend perhaps 20 minutes trying to capture the flight of the crows in this way. So, last of all, um, I'll just try to I think I'll, I will have to do the, I will have to do the magpie because that's the one I've got a photograph of. I've got a photograph of a magpie and I'm going to try to do something from him. And um, if you purely want to do a more finished painting, obviously you can, if you've got wet stretched paper, you can use that. So again, I'm going to try to draw the proportions of the bird. It's not in the way the wing connects to the body. I could even look at the proportions with my, with my pencil. That's uh, a little bit shorter than the body. Um, but that's about the same size as the body, the wing tip to the body is about the same size. So there's some interesting similarities of proportion, which may help just to initially get the uh, general size of the bird. And it's very black and white, or in my case, black and green because the printer wasn't working. But um, uh, or blue, blue and green. So just suggesting the shapes, and then reaching for a brush. I think I'm going to start with my with my number 12 
round. And I might just use the pale blue, cobalt blue, I think. To start with. So preparing the dilute wash it because it's blue. And um to start to put on the feathers. Twisting the brush to try to capture the um, delicate curves of these feathers. The bluish shadow of the bird's body. Perhaps I'll move on to the black. Um, this is a bit damp, but I'll just carry on. Maybe I'll switch now to my my, uh, my half inch filbert. We'll play with that. <laughs> 